cool. So everything works. Computer's on. This is on. Got it. Uh, so hello, everyone. I recognize almost everybody. I think I didn't meet you yesterday. So welcome. Uh, my name is Darcy Neal. Um, I have been a STEAM coordinator for different maker spaces over the years. Um, I've taught lots of electronic workshops, so I'm excited to be teaching this one with y'all today. Um, I think I didn't meet you yesterday also, so welcome. Uh, so yesterday, for those that um, were here and those that are new, uh, Francesca taught a workshop yesterday about who is over here sitting at the table. Um, we taught a workshop yesterday about capacitive touch and how to use that with um, the circuit playground. And today we're going to be focusing just on speakers and how speakers work, um, how you can utilize them in your projects, and the important information that you need to know uh, for um, utilizing them safely. Um, and so this could also be, the use of the speakers could be an extension to the capacitive keyboards that y'all were making yesterday. Uh, the workshop today, it's intended to be very exploratory. We're just going to be looking at a bunch of interesting options of things that you can do with the speakers um, and how to make them on your own out of textiles and, and unusual materials. So, I guess we can go ahead and start showing the slides. So yeah, like I said, this is what I just said. And we're, one of the other things is we're also going to talk about the use of amplifiers and amplify that, which is going to amplify the sound that's coming out of your speakers. And there's a couple of important things to know about that. Um, you already have all of the materials that they've been provided uh, in your kits. So everybody here should be good. We also have lots of extra materials available for you to work with. Um, so, yeah, we should be good. Um, timeline, very loose. Um, I'm definitely going to make sure to check out breaks. There we go. <laughs> I'm definitely going to ask if y'all need to take breaks throughout this, um, just because we're all wearing masks, so if anybody wants to step out and take a breather or anything like that, um, we can definitely do that. Um, and Francesca is here to also be of assistance if anybody has questions throughout the workshop. Um, so just feel free to wave her down, or if you have any questions about the stuff that I'm talking about, feel free to wave me, you know, just wave at me and just let me know. So feel free to interrupt at any point if you need to. So I've got a video about how that breaks down speakers pretty well, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit first. And so we're going to go a little bit deep into the nerdy side of what's happening with the electronics, but we're going to zoom out. So we're just going to, it's kind of interesting to understand the concept as to why speakers operate in the way that they do. And it uses this pretty interesting foundational concept in electronics that revolves around electromagnetism. And electromagnetism, it's any time that you drive a current or a voltage through a wire in any kind of project, that wire is going to generate a magnetic field around it. And so, and it's kind of interesting because depending on which way you are connecting the, the voltage, like the positive and negative part of your battery or the USB power or whatever battery source it is that you're applying to it, which is always going to be DC or a battery in, in our cases, um, it'll change the polarity of that magnet. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and you can see on the examples on here that whenever somebody is applying voltage through a wire just using a double A battery, you can see that it's affecting the compass that's on, this, on here. And the same also interesting concept about this is that not only is it going to affect um, you know, it's not going it'll affect a compass, it'll become magnetic, but you can use it to become a magnet so you can pick things up with it. And so that's 
in that case, that's what you might have heard of it of like an electromagnet. Sometimes they have them in doors where it might be electronically locked because it has a magnet that engages so you can't open the door. It's that same concept. So yeah, so you can actually make your own electromagnet just by, just by spiraling a bunch of wire around like a nail or any kind of like a chunk of metal. And then when you connect a battery source to it, it will become an electromagnet, which is just a cool concept to know as to like what's going on with all of this. Um, we're not going to make an electromagnet in, the, in this class, but that's something that you can always experiment with later if you want to. Um, but so to understand how the speakers work, it all is based off of this principle. Because then in a speaker, what's actually happening is that there is a speaker coil inside of it, which is that same wire that's just wound around a coil that is placed next to an existing permanent magnet, like a neodymium magnet or one, a strong one like this. And then the audio signal is being played through that coil. Um, and the audio signal, it's a super detailed waveform that's going through it. That's very, it's very complicated. You'd have to zoom in really, really far to see the individual bits of like what's happening. But it's the waveform is complex enough that when you play it through the speaker, you're hearing that crystal clear, like what it's supposed to sound like. So, so that's what's happening with the speaker coil is that the audio source is being played through it. It's creating a magnet, magnetic field that then with that coil now being an electromagnet, it's bouncing off of the existing magnet that is inside of it, the permanent one. And so that is just repelling and pulling against it and, push, and pushing back and forth. And that's what's causing the speaker cone to move on your speaker, um, which there's an example of it there on your right side. The cone, it just kind of helps to amplify the sound that's coming out of it. So it would still be bouncing around even without it, um, but it helps to just project the sound out into the room. So it's good to know like what's happening inside of this because it's a pretty cool concept when you get down to it. And so like I mentioned, the purpose of the cone, it's just projecting the sound out into the room. And then so then that means that then the electrical, the electrical signal that was the audio signal has now been transmitted into sound waves that are now traveling through the air. It comes into your ear and bounces off your eardrum. And that's how you hear the sound. And so that's how the voltage of the audio signal gets changes into the sound that you hear in your eardrums. So it's kind of cool. It's pretty nerdy and I really like it. So thank you for <laughs> indulging. So all of this is just good to know um, just so that way when we're kind of digging into how you can make your own speakers it's good to kind of know like what's happening because then you can kind of use that knowledge to your advantage to help with the design of the speaker that you're going to be making. Um, and before I get into it, I want to talk about amplifiers. Um, it's kind of a blurry picture, random one on the internet, but this is the amplifier chip that y'all have in your kit. So I wanted to find one, the same one. Um, the purpose of the amplifier is that it's just going to take that audio signal, which might be coming off of your phone or an MP3 player or whatever, or maybe off of your Circuit Python, whatever, or your Circuit Playground, whatever audio source it is that you're getting, and it's going to amplify that sound for you. Um, and so that's very helpful because then that's kind of like the same thing as the volume knob on your stereo that you might have at home. You could turn that up. It's turning up the volume using the amplifier that's built inside of it. So they're very handy for getting a lot more, a lot more volume out of whatever it is that you're using. Because the circuit pipe, the circuit playground by itself might not be loud enough for what it is that you're trying to do. So using an amplifier along with it is going to be helpful for that. Uh, 
The thing that you need to know about amplifiers is that it needs to be matched correctly with the speaker that you're using. Um, and in this case, and for this workshop, we're gonna be making our own. Um, we're gonna get into this really quickly, but I'll just show you just like an image of the ones that we're gonna be making that you'll have a small one in your kit. Um, this has a certain amount of resistance to it that when you measure it with the multimeter, it'll tell you what the resistance is. And I'm gonna do that on camera in just a minute, just to demonstrate. Um, and then the same thing for your speakers. I don't know if we could get like the, maybe this view in the corner or something. If, oh. yep. Yeah, like that. The same thing on your speakers, it's gonna have an impedance rating on there. This one says four ohms. Um, and so that's like four ohms. It's a ohms is like a value for resistance, which you can measure on your multimeter. And so whenever we measure it with the multimeter, it has that same ohm symbol on there. So it's gonna be measuring the amount of resistance between the two probes that are connected in here. So you wanna know what, um, what um, rating your amplifier is built for. Um, when you're talking about speakers resistance, they call this impedance, which is basically resistance, but it, you could say it has like an impedance rating of eight ohms, I guess. And Francesca has a mechanical engineering degree, so feel free to jump in and correct any of my terminology because I'm an artist, so. <laughs> but this is important to know. And impedance and resistance, they're really similar. It might be in reverse, but y'all can figure out on the internet that that's eight. Oh no, that's correct, I think. Yeah. yeah, so this one's eight ohms. This one was four ohms. This smaller one is 16 ohms. It says it in small print on there. There's another eight ohms. So all these are just different speakers that you just kind of want to check and see what the, what the impedance or the resistance is of it. And to get technical about it really quickly, um, the impedance value is very similar to resistance, but say, um, let's, let me find an example. This, um, this soft speaker, I have another one that I made here that I went ahead and measured the resistance and it's 4.8 ohms resistance. I had measured that earlier. Um, and then an actual impedance that is 125% of that amount. So the impedance is just a little bit higher, but it's close enough that you can kind of just go off of the um, resistance, the ohm value that you're reading on the multimeter and just use that. But impedance is a little bit higher because it actually, the resistance changes just through the application of the uh, the current and everything, it, it does cool things to it. So it, it, it fluctuates a little bit. But in general, you can just kind of go off of the resistance of whatever this says, and just make sure that you match that up to the resistance impedance rating of what the amplifier is rated for. And the reason why, I guess this is another fun concept that applies to yeah, the use of batteries and everything, is that the reason why you need to have a certain amount of resistance on there is because the resistance is going to limit how much current or voltage can dump into your circuit. So you wanna have a little bit of resistance preventing the current from running through there too much because it will overheat your chip if it gets overloaded and it could fry your amplifier. And so this is the same thing whenever you're setting up your speaker stereo system at home. Um, you, there's like, if you ever get into that, um, you need to know that the speakers are rated correctly for the amplifier because you could potentially blow your amplifier up if you put too low of a impedance or resistance of speaker on it. So yes? What happens when you give it too low? If you give it, so if the resistance is too low, or the impedance is too low, um, this is an example of one that's too low because there's just too, it's too conductive, there's not enough resistance on there. 
Um, this one has more resistance just because there's so many more coils on there. It just, there's just enough going on there that there is resistance that's created as the spiral gets bigger and bigger. Um, so I it, like that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it too. I wish it would work, but it does not. <laughs> it's too far apart. It's too, the traces are so thick and there's not enough of them so that whenever we measured the resistance of this, it was 0.4 ohms, which is not enough. We need to be at least four ohms for our amplifier chip. So if you use this on your circuit, there's gonna be so much current that is being dumped into it by the amplifier that the chip on your amplifier board is gonna heat up and it's eventually gonna break. So you need some resistance on there to protect so that way it's not dumping too much current into your speaker, if that makes sense. So it's okay if it's a higher resistance, that's great because then that's gonna be limiting how much current can be dumped into it. Um, it just might not be as loud as if you match it to whatever the lowest resistance is that it can handle. That'll be the loudest potential volume that you'll get out of it. Does that make sense? Sweet. So yeah, so that's just a good thing to know, especially because we're gonna be designing our own. It's important to make sure that you measure it and you make sure that you come up with a design that has enough resistance for it. And I guess just to demonstrate, I'll go ahead and measure a couple on here and make sure people on the internet can see that. Um, and so I have this just set to the resistance setting, which has the little ohm symbol that's on there. Oh, thank you. Um, and so you can know if you touch the leads together, then it goes down to zero because it's, there's nothing being, there's no resistance at all. It's just straight current could be dumped through there essentially. Um, and so for this one, I had measured this earlier. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. And this one now, it's actually measuring just basically nothing. Point. Zero, point, zero, zero, point, yeah, basically, it's basically, there's just basically no resistance in there because the traces are so thick and there's so few. So this would definitely cause your amplifier to heat up and fry. So it's a cool design. I like the way it looks, but unfortunately, it's not going to work for us. You can use it as decoration. Yeah, you can totally use it as decoration, which, yeah. So we'll just have to get creative with the designs that we come up with. Oh, that's great. Yeah, this one that has a lot more traces to it. This one, it's measuring a little bit more. Maybe it's the setting that's on there. What's the minimum Auto range. that you would say would work? The minimum, oh, there we go. I just had to figure out what it was doing. So now it's measuring say 5.6, 5.5. It kind of fluctuates. It's got to like, it auto calibrates. So it takes a second to get there. Oh, so this one's just going down. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm wondering if you could get a design like that one. There's three. But if you could like mimic that with more coils, you could just do the same Because you said it looked cool. So you could probably do like some and then a little space and then yeah, yeah, you could. You could just keep on doing more traces. And then you could even, if you wanted to, then go over to the back side of it and just throw some more traces on the back and just use something in there to space out what that connection point is. So this one, I, I guess because of this multimeter, they're all a little bit different, but this one auto calibrates. Um, so it ended up going down to about three-ish which is actually perfect because that's the minimum impedance or resistance that this amplifier board can handle. So this one is basically the loudest design that you can come up with. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, and so this is the same circuit that I did just on fabric. Uh, these were cut on the vinyl cutter, um, which we have one here and we have the copper sheets available. So I designed this as a vector file and then we cut it out and slapped it on here. Um, and then, yeah. 
and you can notice there's a little bit of solder in the center there. It's because I stabbed a wire through and then I connected it to the back part here. So then this tab is going from the center of that, so that's how all the resistance is coming up with. So if you wanted to apply that to like a hoodie and have speakers in your hoodie, you would just make this like Velcro on the back of it so you could put it in a hoodie and then when you want to wash your hoodie, you just take it out. Totally, yeah. Yeah, you could, you could stick this on fabric, or um, you could stick it on, say, like a membrane material. Um, the material that you choose to stick your speaker on, that's going to have its own acoustic properties as well. Um, but yes, you could totally stick it on there with Velcro or with like the snaps that we have in your kit, anything like that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely good to remove it. Um, I wouldn't wash anything with this, especially with the copper, because it could be damaged. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of cool applications like that that you could totally do with these. Um, and yeah, and so yeah, I have a couple of different designs that I had done. Um, this one is also too low of a resistance. There's just not enough material in between the two connection points. So even though I like it, it wouldn't work. Um, same thing for that, too low. Same design, that one's too low. This one was also too low as well um, because there's just too, the wire's just too thick. Maybe if I had used a thinner wire that it might have more resistance to it, that could have potentially worked better. But this thicker wire, it's just the voltage can just fly straight through it and it just doesn't have enough resistance at all. So, if, so I was wondering if you take like actual copper wire and you like, coil it and it really close together and uh -huh. just sew it down on the fabric without there. It could potentially work. Um, this wire here, it's actually a special wire that has a coating, a clear coating that's on it so that it won't short with itself if it touches itself. So that's something to consider with your design that if it's bare copper wire, you would probably want something maybe stuck on top of it just to isolate it to make sure it doesn't short out whenever it folds over you on can itself. Take silicone under the top of it. Yeah, you totally could. That's an idea. Um, and, and like I mentioned, they make these wires that have the special coating on it, so that way um, you can use it for applications like this. Uh huh. Could we use the? Um, I wonder if it would work if we used the like the conductive thread that we have in our kits. You could use the conductive thread totally, and you could even like measure and see how much thread you're going to need, just measuring the resistance from one end to another piece of the long end. But you could definitely stitch the thread down for sure, especially if it's on like a stiffer piece of fabric or something. So that way it's not going to fold over because this stuff is really soft. Um, that would totally work. That would be awesome. Um, in this particular stitching method, it um, some people really like it. It's called couching. Um, I'm not a seamstress, so it actually took me a long time to do this. It's hard, you can't quite see it on here because of the contrast, um, but it's just like individual stitches just holding the wire down on top of it. But if you're using the conductive thread, you could just sew that all the way through, like whatever that traditional style of stitch is called. Not the complicated one like this. Uh, so you might actually be better off with a less conductive thread in terms of just, because you were saying this, this wire in particular is kind of thick and provides a lot of free movement of the electricity, so like a lower conductivity thread would be, I mean, still conductive, obviously, but would be helpful. Yeah, it could be advantageous yeah. for sure, especially depending on what size of speaker, like how big you want to make it. Yeah. Um, you can see this one, I did it as a square. Um, and this works too, because you're basically going to be designing it around the magnet. Um, this is a bunch of magnets stuck together. But, you know, this has, like, its magnetic field that it is, like, being spit out around it. Um, they make those sheets where you can see it. Um, it has, like, little iron bits in it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but so you can just imagine that just as long as you're working within the parameters of whatever the magnetic field is of this object, then um, it should work for what you're doing. Um, and this is copper, so luckily this doesn't stick to it because that would be a kind of pain in the butt if they just got stuck to each other all the time. 
So it's kind of the perfect, copper is one of the perfect materials to work with for this. It's also very easy to solder. The solder just sticks to it really well. Um, and there's going to be a soldering workshop after this one, which is going to be perfect for this kind of application because being able to solder your circuits is the best thing that you can do for it in terms of durability and establishing like the best connection points as well. I've actually repaired some of these with solder in the past just because these circuits were so delicate that if you get a tear or anything like that, you can always, you can always fix it up. Uh, yeah, so none of these, none of these worked. They looked really cool. Even that one is not quite enough. So you really need to get a bunch of traces on there. Um, you also have, we also have some conductive pins. Um, so you can always experiment with that. It has the, do I have one? I some over there. We just have these circuit scribe pins. Um, and so this has a conductive ink inside of it. And so you could always try drawing out a spiral on a piece of paper and making your own speaker. But these, you probably have to build it up quite a bit in order to get enough, or to get a small enough amount of resistance for it to work properly for you. So they're not always the best, but it's fun to experiment with. Uh -huh. So if you're drawing and you slip and you over, you cross two lines, it won't work great. Right? Uh, it has to not touch. Yeah, you'd probably want to like go and scrape that little bit off so that way it doesn't sh short circuit across that. Okay, same thing with the coils, like if you, if you do it too close together and they're touching, it won't work. So that you have to make sure you have enough negative space in between. Uh, yeah, and it might still work, it just, it, it runs the risk of having okay. less resistance because then it's having like a shortcut from one end to the other end of yeah. the wire. Okay. Yeah, so just as long as there's enough resistance, it should still be okay. So you want a lot of coils, but you want them condensed, but not touching. Yeah, yeah, ideally, yeah. Yes. You can technically, like, could you have technically do any shape as long as it was a spiral in some way? Yes, you technically could. Yeah, it's just you're going to get the best results if you're working within whatever the magnetic uh, radius is of the, or the, okay. yeah, whatever. Is there a good way to measure that? Like, is there a good way to measure the magnetic path of this, of your magnets? I wish that I had, like, an Etch-a-Sketch or something, oh, or one sure. of those, you know, because <laughs> they make those the magnets. Nuts. Yeah, they make these magnet sheets where it'll show like all of the little iron bits yeah. going towards it. So maybe you could also like see like when it does it, how far there's metal on the table so it's sticking everywhere. But like if you put down another small piece of metal, like when it stops pulling in, that could potentially be a way of like kind of guessing what the field is for it. Yes. I'm just wondering about this, those tiny resistors. Uh huh. Could, could we pop one at the end of the circuit? Or Oh, yeah. Yes, you totally could do that as well. You could add there. You can use if you don't have enough resistance. Saying you're really stuck on using a design like this, you could add a resistor to it, and that will add up to the resistance that you need. Um, it just you might not get the loudest sound because you're going to get a better result if you are taking advantage of the magnetic uh, effect that's happening by coiling the wires around it. So, and that's an unverified fact, so definitely test it out um, and just experiment and see what works best for you. Um, and yeah, even like if you have like a spool of wire, uh, if you have a spool of wire or something, you could even just measure from the inside and outside of that and see if that's enough. And you could experiment with a lot of things. Um, and we have a bunch of wire over there uh, we have a bunch of speakers that I got for free from Free Geek. Thank you, Free Geek. Um, you're welcome to pull all of them apart and test them out and do all of that. And we're, we're going to do some experiments as well and see what all of this stuff sounds like. So um, I just want to check and see how's everybody doing. Do we need to take a break for a second before we get into the next part of this? How are we feeling? Good. Keep going, break. <laughs> okay. You're doing good. Sweet. That is good. Uh, 
Yeah, so I meant, you saw me measure some of these on camera so you kind of get the concept. Um, some multimeters, you can set the resistance value on there for the range that you're looking for. Um, we can always demonstrate with that in the future, or you can just look that up online how to do that. But whatever, whatever multimeter you have or that you have access to, um, some of them auto calibrate like this, but some of them you need to set it down so that it's measuring the range of resistance that you're looking for. Um, and I can show you an example later on if you would like, to, if you need clarity on that bit. Um, so yeah. So I'll go ahead and show you a couple of examples here. And we're gonna get into our part of the world of making our own soft speakers. Um, yeah, so it works like we, like we now know, it works in the same way as a traditional speaker works um, where we're just, we're making our own speaker coil where these have the coil that's inside of it of all the wire wound around it. We're just making our own just on a 2D plane. You could, if you wanted to get really crafty, you could also do like the cone, the have it on like a cylinder and wrap the wire around that, but you could also do it flat. Um, they usually do it um, wrapped around a cylinder in these speakers because then it's more efficient because then you're getting it as close to the magnet that's inside of here as possible within that magnetic field without actually touching it. So, yeah, but we can do it, we can do it in whatever we want. It's all, it's all an experiment. We can use any conductive material that we want. Um, if you really wanted to, you could use your copper tape and just make a big old spiral out of that. You can use your conductive thread, you can use wire, you can vinyl cut conductive sheets, uh, whatever works to get the pattern that it is that you need. Pins, there's a bunch of options, which is the fun part about it. Um, and so I'm gonna go through uh, some different examples of the ways that other artists have used this in their work, because when you start to experiment with this, there's a lot of interesting properties that you can discover in it. Um, oh yeah, and this, I guess I already mentioned this. Um, these are some properties to think about. Uh, like I mentioned, the material that you put it on is going to have an effect. Um, the softer material, it's gonna absorb a lot of the sound which the sound is being created as this repels against the magnet and moves around. Um, so softer stuff is going to absorb the sound. If you can have a stiffer membrane, it can help with the volume coming out of it. Uh, so, so this is- this stuff right here is like neoprene, would that be perfect? Because it like has a lot of like resistance and strength, but it also could like- it, Yeah, it could, you know, it, it could definitely be good uh, I would just experiment and see what you like best. Do you have any like examples of different fabrics that are good for the soft speakers? Yeah, I guess I don't know why I haven't shown you this yet. I'll go ahead and plug this in and show you what some of the sounds like, which we should. Talk, this is exciting, so we should do this. Yes. I was just wondering if you could pass around some of the samples that you have, just because I like them. Sure, totally. I will pass around an example of these. Um, these are two examples. I'll pass around this one too, because you can make this work if you use it with a thinner wire. But all of these have too low of resistance. Um, I guess I'll pass around these two. Do I have enough? Yes. Yeah, we'll pass all that around so that we can kind of feel and get an idea for some of this stuff. And that's the, the green paper that I did it on. It's just a construction cardstock material that I have. Um, and yeah. Is this just scotch tape underneath to provide? Is, this, is that what that is? Oh, like, yeah. To block the yeah, piece? if we could show this again. Yeah, I just used a little bit of scotch tape underneath it because that um, prevents it from shorting out. So it's an insulative layer. So any kind of tape underneath there will work for it. So, uh, yeah, but I, oh, sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, 
Uh, yes, I will upload um, all the information for the stuff that we looked at today, so you have access to it. Yes. So if we're going to do it like, I guess, the three-dimensional foil uh -huh. that we're doing, so what would you need to connect that to? What would you need to connect it to? Yeah, with this, with the 2D one, you, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding where the magnet would be and stuff like that. Totally. Um, I guess there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. Um, I have seen it where, in some of the examples that we'll see, where people have stitched a little fabric pocket so that the magnet is just kind of stuck inside of there okay. without being glued to the material so it still has room to bounce a little bit. Um, so you could stick it on there. Um, you could have the magnet stuck to a fixed surface and just have this hanging in front of it. Um, or the opposite way, you could have the magnet like hanging on a string and bouncing around. Like it's, it's totally up to you how it is that you want to create the way that it's connected. And for the, with the one with the three-dimensional foil, how would that be? I guess like there's a, there's um, a bunch of options for that. Like I guess you could always just like glue the coil to something mm -hmm. and then have the magnet um, suspend attached to something else, you know? It's hard for me to say because there's not one absolute way for okay. how to do it, so it'll totally so just they be... they just have to be like near each other? Yeah, they need to be near each other so that way the, the two magnetic fields can be interfering with each other. Okay. And whether you have the magnet fixed to a hard surface or the speaker coil fixed to a hard surface, it's gonna affect the way that it sounds. Um, and I made sure to pick some examples in the videos that I'll show to kind of show what can happen when you change those two things. I was just very curious. Sorry, I was too many questions. No, this is great. This is great. Because like I said, this is all an experiment. So very experimentative stuff. Um, so I have this. Um, the size of your magnet is also going to control how loud your speaker is. The stronger the magnet, the louder it's going to be. So for the example that I used to show in class, this is a huge magnet. You probably won't use one this big. This is like a 250 pound pull magnet. So and it's installed in a box so that I don't get it stuck to anything because it's very difficult to remove. And even these stacked up like this, like it's sticking through the plywood on the metal underneath. But this is a great example for showing uh, what it can do. I have the same amplifier chip just kind of stuck on here, just hot glued underneath it. Um, and on the amplifier chips that y'all have, um, I have extras here too if you end up needing more of them. Um, we soldered these, uh, these header pins to them. They call them female headers. I don't know why they're so gendered. Um, but these are set up so that you can then plug in, say like, you can plug in your like breadboard wires into it and then make different connections that way. You can call it your innie and outie. The innie and outie. So this is, uh, this is the innie. <laughs> yeah, and these are internal, external, <laughs> call it that. <laughs> um, so yeah, you should have uh, alligator clips that have these connections on the other end of it, which will make it a lot easier to test out and experiment. Um, on these, um, like we saw in the diagram earlier, I'll just point it out on here. Um, this has the voltage input. Um, it says five volts on here, um, but you can do, I think it's like anything between 3.3 volts. Um, I wouldn't go up to nine volts. Just stick with the USB voltage range, which is five volts coming out of USB. And out of your battery packs, it's Three, it's like four and a half volts, I believe, which is perfect for the three AA or the three AAA battery packs that you have in your kits. So that is going to be the input for it. Um, it also has a plus and minus on there. Um, it's very important that you get the polarity of that right. The polarity is like which one's positive, which one's negative. Um, the red wire is positive black wires negative, so just make sure that you get that correct whenever you're connecting that, um, because it will, mess, it will mess it up if you plug it in backwards. 
um, and I'm totally happy to help with that um, whenever we get into experimenting with our own kits. It has the audio input on here. It says left, and then there's a little symbol in the middle, and then right. Um, that's the connection for your, um, for your headphone jack. Uh, let's see. And I soldered together some wires for it. Let me grab them real quick. I soldered together some of these that y'all can take if you need them. Um, and this just has the three pins that are on there. Um, and I soldered it so that the ground is in the middle, which is the back connection on here. If I can point with that. Probably not. That's the back, the back is the ground. Um, and so that is the middle connection on here. Uh, multimeter's yelling at me. And then the left channel and the right channel, it's on either side. I didn't test which one was which, but you can always flip it over if that's important to you. And that's gonna be the middle and the tip. One of these are left and right. Um, but it could be plugged in either way. It's just if you have like stereo sound and that's important for some reason, then you pay to do it. But otherwise it's kind of whatever. Um, and so that can plug into there. And that's the only one that has three connection points. So it's kind of self-explanatory in that way. It's off. And then we'll connect uh, probably your battery pack into here. Um, you might need to use breadboard wires in order to connect it to it um, because the, the little JST header doesn't work otherwise. Um, and we have a bunch of breadboard wires if you need them, um, so we can pass some of these out. But it's good that we're having the soldering workshop after this because then you can craft up whatever parts it is that you need to connect to any of the components that you're trying to connect to. And so then on the other end here, this can do stereo output. So it has a left channel and a right channel, and there's just two connection po points there. And those are going to be what you want to connect to your speaker. And you can use your alligator clips that have, the, that have this kind of header on the other end, and then you could plug it into there and then connect it to whatever it is that you're wanting to test it with. Um, and so the one that I have on here, it's the same thing. I just use different style headers just because I was doing, it was for a different workshop and I, yeah. So the same thing, it's just a different connection point. Um, and so I had soldered up my own uh, little connection points between the alligators and these kinds of headers so I could just plug that in. And I have this just set up with a USB cable. I just cut the USB cable open. It's usually color coded for which one is positive and negative. Um, and if you don't know what it is, if it's not color coded correctly for some reason, you can use your multimeter to test. And it will let you know um, which side of it is positive and which one is negative. So if we wanna test that out together later, if you wanna do the same thing, we can do that. Uh, but for now, I just have this plugged in. Um, so it's getting voltage actually from my computer. Um, and then the audio cable, I just soldered it on and it has an eighth inch jack on the other end. So it's just like this cable, just a lot longer. So let's see. Um, and I know that some, a lot of new phones don't have uh, eighth inch jacks on there. So I brought some, I brought like two old phones if you'll need that style connection so you can test it with. Uh, Francesca has an MP3 player too. Uh, so we've, we can, uh, we have those options if you need it to test out for this workshop. Um, this is my old iPhone that is all destroyed from, you know, when I was a broke college student. So I have to find the least embarrassing music on here that I have. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so this is playing, and there is volume that is playing through this. There's nothing connected to it yet. So we'll connect this onto there. It doesn't matter which one is the positive or the negative side. Either one should work for it. 
and get it in there. And so, I don't know, if, oh, the speaker's on there, but hopefully you can pick it up. That's still going. So, just with the distance of where it is, that's going to change. You leave it on there, it's just going to try and bounce around. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that wild? <laughs> uh, yes, question? I'm missing something. Sure. So the copper's not magnetic. No. So how is that <laughs> It's it's when you are running a voltage through it, which in this case is your audio signal, it generates um, any voltage running through a wire creates a magnetic field around it. And so if the say if one side is positive end, let's pretend the yellow is the positive in this case. The, the, let's say the magnetic field is going to go in one direction, and then if you reverse the voltage so that the positive is on the other end, then the, voltage, the magnetic field changes in terms of the north and south pole of it. And so an audio signal is going into the positive ranges, down into the negative ranges, back and forth so fast that it is then causing this to bounce back and forth at this crazy rapid speed that I think it's like 300 milliseconds per second or something. It's a lot. <laughs> so that's actually what's happening is the voltage is bouncing back and forth, causing the magnetic uh, polarity to change like crazy. And it's fast enough that it's complex enough that you can actually clearly hear what it's supposed to sound like, which is wild. And so this paper is a little bit better just because Yeah, it's bouncing around a little bit, um, and if y'all want to come touch it, you're more than welcome to if you want to feel it, but it is definitely bouncing around just a bit. Kind of hard to tell because I'd have to play like a low frequency or something for you to really see it. Can you see one of the fabric ones? Yeah, totally. So this one, I actually, I had to reinforce it last night because I've used it for so many examples. It had a break in the line, and so... If that happens, if you're not getting sound, just use the multimeter and you can probe it out and find where the break in the line is. Let me just keep it on the same song so you have a clear reference. Get past the intro if I can. So it's a little bit quieter. Probably even if I cut the fabric away and got rid of all the, the floppy bits on the edges, that could help too. And it doesn't matter which way it goes. I usually put tape over these to make sure that they don't cross, but I soldered it so it's stiff enough that I don't think that's gonna happen. So it's still got a little bit of kick to it, even for it being fabric. Um, I could also use it with this magnet. Oh, there you can, I don't know if you can see. Um, it's being connected to the music from my phone through the amplifier board. Okay. Um, the other end of this is connected to the audio jack that's going into um, the input on the amplifier board and then out through this. Okay. And it's like we could try it actually and just plug it directly from the phone into this. It's just going to be a little bit quieter. It's a short song. <laughs> it's 
So let's see. These magnets are so strong. And one of them's broken. Um, and you, you have these magnets in your kit. They're pretty tough. And so that's just one. But if you stack these up, which we have extras of, it's just going to increase the volume because it's got more magnetic pool to bounce around with. More bounce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so yeah, like I said, magnets are all shape and sizes, so this is a bunch stacked up. You'll ideally want to build your speaker to match with the frequency or the range of that. Yes? Sorry, one more. Sorry if I missed it. What's the name of this copper uh, sheet material? Um, it's just a, I don't know if it has an official name. They use it for guitar bodies a lot. They'll line the inside of an electric guitar to shield it. So it might be like a shielding foil, but what, is, what do you, do you know what it's called? Uh, adhesive copper EMF shielding. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we just found it like on, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, it's the same stuff as what we have in the rolls, which I think that you'll have the fabric version of this, which is way better quality actually, but these, I've also bought it in like three inch thick rolls, and that's been really helpful for like, capacitive touch projects and whatnot, because they could just run long strips of it to connect from one end to the other. Um, but they sell these in like, it's almost like notebook size paper. Cop copper sheets with, copper sheets with adhesive backing. I don't know, we could find it on the internet and figure out what the perfect search terms are, but I've found that they've changed. It's always been a little bit of a hunt trying to find it on the internet. Um, so yeah, that's what those two sound like. And let's try it with this square one too, just to kind of see what the difference is like. It's actually louder, it's kind of cool. And I think it's just because it has more windings to it. So you're getting more, it's generating more of that magnetic field around it. So. So you can get weird with the, the shapes of it, you know, just as long as you're playing within the field of the magnet that you're working with. This band is really kind of, they have a lot of noise in their songs anyway, so might not be the best. Um, and it's always a good idea, like if you're experimenting with something, this chip will heat up. So when you're for you know, measure the resistance of it first to make sure that it's within the safety range. Um, and you can always just kind of touch the chip too. If it's starting to get warm, unplug it and add a resistor, something, do something to fix that. Um, you could even use this, you could just use the magnet off of an existing speaker. So you could always just pack that, that off of there. It's a tiny one. You can, I can hear it, but it's so tiny you probably can't hear it. Yeah. So the size of magnet will definitely change. And then to give an illustration, an example of like how, let me open this. Uh, let me find. Oops. So to give an illustration of how much more efficient the designs can get, you play it through this one, if I can get it on there. It's a volume difference, so if you want to use a traditional speaker in your project, by all means, you totally can. It's just cooler if you can make your own from scratch. But it does get a lot louder. 
and especially with these things, I'll just play it for just a second. Um, and I have a pile of them over there that you can use or take. But so this is just with your little tiny amplifier board. So being able to have access to making a lot of noise with just a little um, addition is pretty fun. So those are some examples. Um, and as we know, for good reasons, I'm not going to test these out because I don't want to damage the chip. Um, and yeah, all, this, all the other ones too, they're just a little bit, they're just not big enough. So we're not going to try those out. Okay, and so at this point, I think I'm going to get into showing some examples. Um, how's everybody doing? Does anybody need a break before I jump into the next section? Okay, sweet. Totally. I'm gonna wait just a couple of minutes because I would like to drink some water as well. Mm -hmm. So just a, just a second, take a breather, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna get into some experiments. I'll be right back. So now we're gonna check out some examples that other people have done um, in hopes that this will kind of help to help for us to brainstorm about what's possible and help, help you all to hone in on what it is that you might want to do with your personal experiments. Um, and like we talked about, there's a bunch of different ways that you can make um, a speaker coil. Um, if you're into sewing techniques and things like that, you can use, um, oh, let's show the slides please. Yeah. You can do the couching stitch, which you can see on here. Um, and I'll share the slides with you. All of these go to links that are like tutorials about how to do all of these different techniques. Um, somebody was doing basket weaving, which is kind of fun. So they were building that into these vessels that they could then carry around and set down and play music with. Uh, so any technique, if you want to do it by hand, there's all sorts of ways that you can go about that. Um, and like we mentioned also, you can do vinyl cutting with it. Um, you could do laser cutting as well if you just have like a piece of conductive fabric that you just want to cut through that isn't capable of going through a vinyl cutter. You can always just, uh, you could laser cut that. Um, you can see in the example on here that somebody's drawn it with the conductive ink. Um, and you can even see on there how thick they had to make the traces in order to get the sounds that they were looking for. Um, or just copper tape, anything that you want. Anything that will get that spiral formation will work. I have a question. Does that yes. say copper tape or can it be the conductive tape that we have? Oh, it could be the conductive tape that you have as okay. well. Um, and like I mentioned, we have copper sheets available, so if, if y'all come up with the design, we can vinyl cut it for you and get you your own custom speakers. Um, in your kits, though, you should have, I think I said it over on the table there, but you should have a small vinyl cut speaker already that has a sticky backing that you can stick to any surface that you want. Yeah, and we have them back here. Some people have uh, full functioning speakers in their kits. Yeah. And the magnets are here as well. Yeah, some yeah, some kits they just got a small speaker in there. Um, and then some of them have the uh, vinyl cut ones. And if you don't have a vinyl cut one yet, we have extra so we can pass them out to you. Yes. Why is there tie work in the top coil? Why what? How does there tie work in the top coil? Oh, the speaker on Francesca's tie, it was on the bottom. Oh, yeah. so the rest of this decoration? Yeah, that was all, that, those were all the touch points for activating the different keys. And then the speaker was actually built into the bottom oh, of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've got extra parts and things if you need it. Uh, so yeah, there's multiple different techniques of ways that you can make it. Um, and you can see here that you can also do all sorts of your designs with it if you want to as well. I definitely recommend experimenting. 
Uh, so now we're going to get into some of the examples of what other people have done with using this, um, using this application. Um, somebody built it into the sides of a chair so that it was kind of like a more isolated sound source for when they were watching TV or playing video games or something. Um, and if you go into the link, it's kind of like a white paper, it's very official looking, but they were just talking about their experiences with that. And it was nice because it was very isolated. They could hear it the, and it didn't disturb the people around them. And then they didn't have to wear headphones and covering up their ears. Uh, they also did an experiment where they installed it inside of a stuffed animal. Um, that's a really fun application if it's like a pillow or something like that because it's a very isolated sound. And then you can lay your ear up against it and it'll be at a comfortable volume. So those were some fun applications for it. Um, here you can see um, this pillow speaker project I think is really neat. Um, and that link, it goes to a tutorial on how to make your own. Um, they just have the magnet stitched inside of like a little, they stick a little piece of fabric in there and made a little pocket for it. Um, but this is nice because it's a low enough volume that you could just lay your head up against it. Um, and they also did this, which I guess is kind of like a basket weaving style technique, but they built it into um, a yogurt cup, which I think that they just got like, they got a, they used a flame and got a needle hot and just poked the holes in the yogurt cup so it had little stitch points to it. And they, in this one, they actually hovered the magnet above it, which I thought was kind of neat. With a bell? Yeah, it looks like they might have just hot glued. But it looks like it's dangling, dangling above. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is dangling on there, which is kind of neat. So they just hovered the magnet in that way. So if you had like the circle of these things, Just playing like a buzzer sound to it. <laughs> yeah, but with it being, oh, you can see really snappy holes. But with it, so you using that like yoga cup, it has to amplify the sound to that. So that's a cool application for it. Get snippets of memory. Um, this is one. This is where it gets real fun. Um, this is an artist that I really like. Uh, their name is Victoria Shin, um, and they. Um, using like Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or something, you can kind of incorporate different images into the coils and then using a vinyl cutter you can make all these detailed cuts. So they were cutting portraits into their application. That is insane. Yeah, let's see. That's kind of easy and cool. You can even see where they had to solder it together because it might have torn at one point or something. And they just do, uh, they mostly play like experimental noise music, so that's going to be all the sound examples that you hear from them. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so it's super fun. You can get in and with all these things. You can see it has tiny traces on there connecting most of it. Yeah, that's so small as it is to an antenna. 
Um, and they also did one where they stuck it on a snare drum, which was a really good acoustic resonator for this. Come on. I just stuck a bunch of random magnets all over the place, which is kind of cool too. Yeah, it's just a really smart design and experiment. Because you can run thread across it and then just have it hovering in the middle of it if it doesn't have a membrane on it already. How difficult is it to get the once you vinyl cut it, that especially the sole, if you look over like the Yeah, um, whenever you uh, vinyl cut something, it there is a transfer tape that's on the top of it. Here, let me grab a speaker. and then you can stick that onto any surface that you want. So it's still a little bit, del it's definitely a delicate process, but it makes the ability to transfer all of it a lot easier. Um, and you can even see like she had to do a bunch of soldering repairs on it anyways, just cause she's, yeah, so they were just experimenting. Is this the speaker thing you uh, That is just a traditional speaker. Yeah, that we just kind of passed out so people could use it as a comparison. And then we have these as well. So if you don't have one of these in your kit, I can totally pass, pass these out. Do you have one of these yet? No, I don't. Let's get one. Um, and we made extras too, so that if anybody wants to make headphones or anything like that, yeah, totally. And then we'll set those up. Um, and even for this to get these set up, it needs a little bit more work done to it. Um, we stabbed a hole in the center there, so that way you can stick a wire through it. But yeah, you need to have the connection point from, the, from each end of the coil. So we put um, a hole in there so that way you can solder a wire that's coming out the back end of it. Or you could put a piece of tape across the top as an insulator and then solder it on there. Um, but either way, um, learning how to solder next is going to be the perfect companion for this project. So let's look at some other examples. This is an example of the headphone idea that somebody did. Um, and they just kind of stitched it into, I think it was like a stretchy neoprene headband or something. Just nice because then you can kind of get it connected nice and tight. Um, and these don't have video to go along with them, unfortunately, so you just kind of have to guess. But somebody also experimented um, with making haptic feedback sensors for like gaming or something. They stitched this pattern into a shirt. Um, you can't, the, the image is blurry enough, you can't zoom in and see the detail of it, but it definitely is done with a embroidery machine, so that way it has that spiral formation for it. Um, they also experimented in putting it into wristbands, so that way they could kind of feel the vibration of different applications, playing games, or whatever it was that they were doing. Uh, so that's kind of fun, you can stitch it into your clothing, you can make headbands out of it, wristbands, anything that you want. Um, and this, um, this was the same artist that uh, Victoria Shin worked with to make those portraits that we saw, Ginny Graff. And 
this is a fun application because they're just holding the bag that's in their hands. That's fun. Yeah. So you... How are they making different notes? Uh, they probably have a different audio source going to each one. Um, so it could be... That's so cool. Yeah, so that'll definitely take some planning on the other end of like, how do you get all the sound sources that you need so to... So you it. do like different edits on different like. Totally, yeah. Yeah, and just holding the magnets too, you can kind of sh move around and it could be, like you could make a cool like exploratory piece using this application, which I just thought this was super cool. This was, I discovered this whenever I was building out the slides for this class and like, yeah, there's all, people are always coming up with new things that you can do with this. And this was just done recently within the last couple of months. It's a 16 week old video, so oh, wow. just pretty fun. Mm -hmm. I think she's working on something where she's trying to use um, ceramics to make a ceramic for mm -hmm. the Oh, cool. Yeah. Into like clay? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's she's really doing cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I just discovered her the other day, and I was like, I'm so I'm so blown away. I think it's great. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's a cool idea, and this is one that I also discovered in the process that I thought was really important to share. Uh, because this shows a pretty solid example of if you just mount the speaker or mount the magnet on a hard surface and then just have the fabric just draping. Oh, that <laughs> is rad with the fan. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And they definitely played with um, they played with uh, the frequencies that they were sending through there to dial it in so that way it I think it might be a fab uh, a fabric, yeah, which they make uh, conductive sheets as well. Yeah. Right, like a thicker. I have some thicker material. Yeah. Well, I think that they laser cut this out of a sheet of that conductive fabric and then adhered it to this really thin. Fine veil, oh. which is really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought that was. You can make like some kind of really cool tribal like costume and have that be like the speaker. Totally, that would be awesome. And so what they did in a further experiment with that to kind of zoom out and show what the end goal was, they stitched it into. I think the speakers are all like built into the side here. Mm -hmm. You could see this uh, railing here that was the thing that was holding the magnet on the back side. But they dialed it in so that way it would create like this nice oh, fluid-like motion. Mm. Which, so pretty. yeah, I was, I think that's pretty rad. I've never seen anybody do this before. So I was, this, is, this was new to me. So this is like almost using it for its haptic properties of, of just moving the fabric rather than making sound. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that was a really cool application. Wow. Is neon to up? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many, you can kind of see it, oops, it'll stop doing that. You can see one of them here, you can see the coils there. Where is this person? I don't know actually. I should know this, but I actually just found them just the other day. Oh, well, this gallery is in, yeah, in Budapest, but I'm not sure where they are. I will link it in the slides and then do some investigation because they so have a. EG, EG Tech, is that like a social media for tech people? Oops. I don't want to play that. Yeah, I think it's just their username. Um, but they have done a lot of experiments just with it. And but they're on Vimeo, like, what is Vimeo? Oh, it's just a, it's like YouTube. It's just a, it's a platform for hosting videos. Mm -hmm. So they just have a compilation of all their videos on here. Awesome. 
Yeah, they're pretty rad. So it's a, it's a duo. Yeah, it's like two people. Yeah. Yeah, so they have uh, some videos of them doing performances where they have these tapestries hung all over the place. Um, like these, where they just kind of have them everywhere. Um, I'll go ahead and show this just so we can kind of see what it looks like in an installation. And I think he's using like Max MSP or Pure Data in order to program the sounds, which means he's able to really customize like which speaker is doing which and whatnot. Super experimental, so I was like questioning if I would even show it to this workshop. Show a zoomed in video of this in a second too. That was a fun experiment. But I think that this might be one where. Oh no. I thought she had magnets in her hand, but I don't think that she does. But yeah. This was an example of that uh, material that they have set up. So that was kind of that's kind of fun. Like I've never seen anybody use soft speakers just for the experiment of creating like motion and vibration, but there you go. And the same principle for the electromagnetism and everything for why this is happening or why the speakers work the way that they do, they use the same concept in motors. Like a motor is just essentially like a magnet with an electromagnet around it that is pulsating in the right way that it's causing for the motor to spin. So same concept, just a different application. Except this isn't spinning anywhere, it's just kind of flopping around in space. <laughs> and, oh yeah, and then dialing back um, considerations for whenever, after looking at these examples, just remember the considerations for what it is that you might be designing. Think about the material you're mounting it to, how it's going to be mounted, size of the magnet, shape, and all of that. So these are all just examples of things to kind of give you uh, some inspiration points. So that way, as you go about designing your project, you kind of have these as a frame of reference for what might work best, or what might work better than others and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, that is what I have to talk about soft speakers. Um, so at this point, um, you're welcome to take a break. Um, and we also, and like I mentioned, I brought a bunch of speakers from Free Geek, a bunch of random big ones, small ones, all different sizes that y'all are more than welcome. And I encourage you to pull out your amplifiers and experiment with them and see what they sound like. Uh, those speakers are up for grabs, so if you want them, you're welcome to take some home with you. Um, I have more than that, so if you need 10 of them, just let me know. We have them all for you. Um, and I, we did a vinyl cutting demo yesterday, so I don't remember who all was here for it, uh, but the vinyl cutter is available. So if there is something that you want to design and then cut out, we can totally help you with that. Um, and even if you don't know, um, if you know how to use uh, a vector file like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer, it's another 
kind, and that is going to be best for designing it precisely how you want. But if you don't know how to use a vector program, you can also draw it on a piece of paper in a high contrast color. So it's like a high contrast black and white image. And then we can help turn that into the vector file that we then cut out with the vinyl cutter. So we have that workaround available if you don't know how to use a, a vector program already. You can just work with something that you can draw on paper. Uh, so, so yeah, at this point, um, it says feel free to experiment. Um, I have all of the speakers set out over there. Um, you can use your battery packs and um, battery packs and your amplifier boards and alligator clips and everything and connect them up to different speakers and try it out. So there might be a break in there somewhere. Yeah, which totally happens. It might be why it was staticky. So I heard that some conductive inverter thread would be able to get inverter out. Yeah, totally. I don't know if this is on. Uh, I was just messing around with it while you were talking. So how do you test it again? So you want to connect it to the outside and then inside. So it might, if it's not reading anything, and you can stab it pretty good if you want. Um, if it's not picking anything up, that means that there's a break somewhere out there. And so we don't know where that, oh, I might have just hit it. Might just be one of these connections. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let go for a second and see if that. Oh yeah, that kind of fixed it. So yeah. Press it down better. All right. So it is conductive. Yeah. Totally. We don't know what the true resistance is, but. And also, my hands are gonna float too. You know. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. Kind of just unpack that a little more. But I also yeah. wanted to test this thread. Got, yeah. Here, we'll roll this up a little bit, and then we can test this. Nice. I was gonna, I was gonna use that, but I think I was, I'm gonna sew this into a glove, and that's how I'm gonna make the little, uh, that's how I'm gonna make the glove speaker thing. Oh, nice. Cause I already got the glove all set up and everything. You can, those are other magnets you can grab if you wanna try it. Oh, this is all my fault. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's so strong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all right. So, we could just do... I just want to say that it was on our own back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's pretty, yeah, it's surprising how well it works. Yeah, I oh, wow. If we don't want to resonate, then uh, is there any way to, because for example, if we don't have a sports fair, fair the for a sport, uh -huh. but so we just want to have sound, but no resonance and no, oh, no movement. Uh -huh. um, it's going to move a little bit no matter what, because that's how the sound is being produced. Yeah. Because it's that bouncing is pushing the airwaves out, so it needs to be able to move a little bit. Right, so I guess you might have to get. Um, it worked. Yeah, it worked. Cool. Do you know how much resistance it was? Oh no, not this. This. Oh that. Oh nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess that would be that would have to be a part of your design. Like maybe you could design it so it's stiff on the inside, but the outside part could yeah. fluctuate. Yeah, that'll just be a design consideration. 
it seems to be like five something. Yeah, it might be sorting out on itself too, since yeah, it's yeah. not insulated. Yeah, probably. But I think I'll just sew it in and then test it then. Yeah. We're going to teach you how to solder. Um, there's going to be a solder workshop. And then if you want to, how's this going to work? And then if you want to vinyl cut one, um, then you can. Yeah, no, I just like, I got it. I don't know how to Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if we, we could totally talk about it if you want to. If you, if you can explain the idea that you have, and, and then we can figure out what parts you need to do, what you want to do. Okay. I wonder. I have a center and then a to the speakers on there. And then would you just plug it into your phone and the electric current from the phone would work? Or? You can plug it into your phone. It might not be loud enough. Um, you might need to connect this in between. And so if that's the case, then you could cut this. Um, and then so you might need to cut that and strip the wires and then solder it so that you can plug it into this. Okay. We have some header pins for it. Yeah. And then the other end will come out of input, and so your phone will go there, the headphones will come out from there. Cool. Thank you. So, sweet. So, I so what sort of mess set up? Oh, sweet. You've got that plugged in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's touching or not, but, uh, so, like, does it matter what wires touch what hit? Did that come off? I took it off. I can put it back on. It is. Yeah, I would probably leave it on there because for this, we're gonna we want to solder that and put some stiffer connections on there. Then you can plug it in. Yeah. We'll be able to like solder it so it has that kind of a tip on it. Um, but I would. You should in your kit have some. You should have some alligator clips that have these kinds of plugs on it. Uh -huh. So if you get that back on there, then you could just plug it into it and then connect the alligator clip to the other end. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And somebody made a good point too. Um, that if you want to make headphones, you can just chop these off and just use the wiring for that. It's already laid out. And you might need these hard. Yeah, I'll tell it to her because I know that she wants to do headphones. Yeah, so I don't, if other people want to use like the vinyl cutter thing, I don't have to rush about that or anything. Because I know, isn't there going to be like, are you guys going to be around for the next week or something doing a course? Or 
am I confused? Oh, I think that there is, like, it's going to be open lab for today for the next couple of hours after the soldering thing. Um, and if you already know how to solder, you can just go straight over there and look with the bus. So we'll be around for a couple hours, which it would be best to ask us about it since we've done this chunk before. Right. Um, yeah. And then uh, I think that it was like this weekend, uh, not to be sent out a message to everybody asking if they wanted to do like an in person brainstorming workshop or just okay. over Zoom. Yeah, there's going to be more opportunities to work on the projects, but I think that it's going to be just for this next week. Okay. Update. Yeah, and then this will be open at certain times, but they're still determining what the times it's going to be. So if I wanted to just do two, two of these with the stickers, then I could just transfer it onto whatever fabric I wanted later or, or whatever material later. Yeah. Could we do that today? Totally. I guess it's, it's, yeah, I'll be around. So. Yeah, and I have these. Uh, I have the vector files saved already, so we should just be able to pull them up and cut them out. And that may be kind of a good way to get people who have started and stuff if they haven't seen it in action. Totally, yeah. I brought some clothing that I'm just going to take the same file and pull it into um, Photoshop or Illustrator and then stretch it and make it look weird, you know, kind of... You know, just stretch the vector file out so that way it looks a little bit more interesting. Uh -huh. And then final cut it out and stick it to some clothing that I have. Oh, cool. Yeah. But when are you going to do that? Do you have a time that you're supposed to do demonstrate and stuff like that? I'm just um, trying to see. Um, that, I'm going to try and do it a little, in a little bit. It's kind of a personal project, but it's cool. It would be cool to watch. Yeah, yeah totally. I'm going to watch you do that. So I'll, I'll stick around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just grab you when you're ready. Totally, yeah. Okay, cool. This is so exciting. I'm like, I'm going to make this, like, tapestry. Like, I have this. Uh-huh. It's just gonna be a big noisy whatever. But then I thought like that it would be cool to make oh, some yes. of these guys. Um, so I wanna make a couple of these and that's gonna be like um, all these little photo sensors um, sewn in or using this uh, the this tape across onto this tapestry. Uh-huh. And then people, there'll be a light shining behind, so there'll be like a nice shadow, and then people will just be playing it with their whole body. Or two people could play in there together, just making like sound, and then, um, yeah. but if I could put the speakers on there too, that would be like really cool, and maybe, I would probably put it onto some kind of like stiffer material, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, because you'll get it in the form of a sticker that you can then just peel and stick on whatever it is that you want to use it on. I'd like to try it on metal too because I was checking out, like, I can't remember the name, it's like an old French artist that, like, did, he put, like, an ex transducer cider thing onto a piece of metal so then it calls it, like, as it vibrates, it's like resonance. It's on a gong. It's on a gong, so it's, like, meant for, like, all that nice reverberance and stuff, and then it's just, like, you know, like yeah. it's the oh, sound is really cool. It might also be that might have been done with the transducer. If you've seen the, tra have you seen a transducer before? Like I feel like it's like Dayton Audio Exciter thing yeah. that you just stick on there. Is that just like a that. transducer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. Totally. So the, yeah, that's what. Those is. are yeah, those are great. And it's, I mean, it's going to be just like the difference between this and that. Like it's going to be much louder with the Exciter. Right. But you could stick um, this on there, but you're going to want to put an insulative layer in between so that way it doesn't short out the, the metal surface. And that could even be like maybe like a clear spray paint could be an isolated layer or just throw some tape down and stick it on the tape or whatever you think. Or stick it on fabric and then just use some spray adhesive and just whatever. Maybe like work. even like a thick enamel coating or something. With yeah. Because you also don't want that interface medium. Thank you. Something that yeah, absolutely. Thing. Thanks for coming. You can really transfer that. And I was just curious what project you were doing. Yeah. yeah. When you were like, I need a really long wire. Is that you? Is that you? I don't know if it was me. Okay. I don't think so. No, I just I just gonna make a couple different versions of this. 
and then um, have these photo resistors just like um, yeah going uh, sewn onto the stuff like, with all with the wires being like this or maybe some foil and just different things and just kind of make it look like a visual tapestry like that sort of like people will just kind of play with their shadow through it and then and now that I'm taking this tab and getting so many more ideas that I could actually putting the speaker on the tapestry too how beautiful that would look you know with all this other with seeing the circuitry but making it like an art piece in itself like designing it and then I did the class with the Helen Leo with the what you guys are doing this circuit express and I was thinking about turning that into some kind of light thing that we could take and shine it and kind of put it over the thing and it would kind of make rhythms and stuff if you had its own like a prop. Yeah like yeah. It, it's set up to trigger the photo sensor. Yeah yeah with just like a like a rhythm of oh, sorts fun, yeah. the light delay and stuff you know. Oh yeah 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 because you can get the light whatever the light's programmed to do it's going to affect the sound that you hear. Yeah. Yeah so it could be like rad. more like rhythmic and then it's just like a you know just prop that people could, as their instead of just their hands and it's like for another thing that they can do. Well that's yeah. what you can do now as well, like in the activity where it triggers like silent speakers or something. Oh yeah, have the magnets having, in there too. Oh, I was like also thinking about like just having these like weird like little, um, if I like circles a lot, I don't know more than, I'm more of a circle than a square. Um, but like having like a mitt sort of thing, if you put your hand in that would be like a, and then it could be like the circuit could be sewn on the front with the, the LED lights and stuff, and then it could actually have a little magnet in it too, so it could be any different thing with these myths or that kind of a thing that you put on to interact with it, that could just be freestanding, I think that would be really good. Yeah. I'm so excited to be here, you guys. It's just like, ah, it's exactly what I needed um, to Nice. And get me started on some projects. I haven't done anything in a long while with this kind of thing. Yeah, totally. So. Are you going to go to the soldering workshop? I am. Yeah, because I haven't soldered in a billion years. So. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And that's I want to. Um, I actually have most of the stuff to. I could either take this and try to solder it um, into. I have these different. Um, yeah. Yeah. Guys, here. Nice. You can do something where you have the lock and then you insert the key. That's what I'm saying. 